second mission was uh, STS-51. Uh, we were supposed to launch in, in July of uh, 1993. Perfect day again for weather. We went out to the pad. It was a blue sky. We were looking through the, through the windscreen and, and uh, telling the guys, okay, get ready for the ride of your lives. And they said, oh, cool, here we go. And so we get through the count. We get out of the 20-minute hole. Everything is fine. Uh, and then we uh, get into the 30-second time frame, which is when the shuttle computers take over. Uh, checking everything out and um, we got down to 19 seconds and I'm watching the clock and all of a sudden it recycles to 20 minutes again and I'm thinking that's not good um, and the ground called after a few seconds and said we've had to scrub the launch uh, the hydraulic pump in your solid rocket booster didn't come up to speed quick enough the computer kicked it out and that stopped the countdown so we had to get out of the shuttle again so anyway we delayed a couple of days and then we finally went out to the pad once again, it was blue sky everywhere, beautiful day, the, the uh, emergency fields are all clear, countdown's going very smoothly, we get down to 30 seconds, we get past 19 seconds, everything's fine. Uh, I'm telling the crew, get ready for the ride of your lives, and they said, you said that last time. And so I said, well, here it comes, and we get down to seven seconds, and the main engines begin to, to, to ignite. Seven, go for main engine start. Feel the rumble behind you, the whole shuttle stack bends about six feet at the top. Uh, you can feel that movement as the, engine, as the engines come up to full power. We get down to four seconds and all three of them are running and we get to three seconds and then all of a sudden the red lights come on, the siren goes off. Three main engines up and burning, three, we have a cutoff. And the engines go pew and shut down. And that's a very weird feeling when you're back sitting up there swaying back and forth from the twang. And turn to Bill Reedy, who's the co-pilot, the pilot, um, as we call him, who had all the engine controls. I said, Bill, what did you do? And he said, I didn't touch anything, boss. I don't know what happened. Um, and uh, so the ground called in a few minutes, and one of the valves had not opened quickly enough and, um, for, the, uh, for the locks. And so uh, the, the system shut us down, and we aborted. And we came back a month later. We went through the countdown, perfect weather, blue sky everywhere. Um, we get down to 30 seconds. I tell the guys again, get ready for the ride of your lives, and there's no answer. And I realized they've dozed off, so I had to wake them up. And, it wasn't quite that bad, but they were dozing early in the count. Uh, because by this time, they're old hands at least strapping in. Uh, this time we got down seven, to, uh, through six, the count, the engine started, you can feel start, the rumble, you feel the, the pitch burning. of the shuttle, and then Two, you get down to zero one, and bam. Zero and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, launching the next generation of communication satellite technology. It's like an 18-wheeler hits you in the back standing when you're sitting still on the freeway. And you go leaping off the pad, the uh, shuttle is shaking, rattling, and rolling because the solid rockets are producing all their thrust. You've got seven million pounds of thrust pushing you into the sky. You weigh about four and a half million pounds, so you're accelerating really fast. You're going 100 knots before you clear the tower. You're going Mach 1 in about 40 seconds. And your eyes are wide open because it was a really rough ride for the t first two minutes. I started to watch the gauges, and all of a sudden, this big bang hits the side of the shuttle. The, the, these tongues of flame go shooting across the windscreen in front of it, and it's the tank, or the SRB separating from the tank, and the little rockets that push them away. It's a big train wreck, basically. Uh, but it got our attention, and then everything gets very quiet, and you're accelerating fast, and you feel like I'm really not going into space. I'm still in the simulator. And then you look at the gauges, and you're going through 150,000 feet, 200,000 feet, Mach 6, Mach 7. And eventually you're in space and all of a sudden you're weightless and it's just an amazing feeling uh, and, and really, really the, a dream come true for me.